Now, as much fun as it is to try and emulate what the best players in the world do around the greens, it's not really realistic to expect to be able to do it, especially if you're a time crunch golfer. So today I'm going to actually run through something a little bit more simplistic, more basic, which essentially is the lowest hanging fruit that you could possibly grab around the greens in order to make sure that A, you get the ball on the putting surface more often, and B, you don't make as big an error as, as maybe you make when you're trying to pull off shots that you're not really practiced for. And what we're going to do is take advantage of the T-Rex drill. Some of you may have seen it, it's the one where you kind of impersonate a dinosaur, you know, club goes out really long with the wrist, really short arms, and our elbows pinned to your side, very rotational. Now, the thing about that technique is it's very, very low powered. Now, so how do you then bridge the gap when you've got longer distances to cover? And we're just going to run through a, a demonstration of T-Rex, initially with the 58, just to show how softly it comes off and also how to do it nicely. And then just run through different club options and how you uh, use or utilize the same principle going through the bag uh, to pitch the ball those different distances. So the T-Rex side out was a drill, right? And it was a drill which was really designed to minimize wrist action. Now, you know there's always going to be some. Last week's video demonstrated that. And to try and tie the arms and the elbows to the body as much as possible. Okay, so what you do is you set up and you try and lengthen out the wrist this way. So your wrists go from, let's say, thumbs up to thumbs down and stretched out. So the wrist is very, very flat in here. The second thing you then do is flex the elbows and pull them up to your side. So the elbows sit just on either side of the ribcage here. And the goal is to not have the elbows lengthen and leave the rib cage this way. So that controls the bottom of the swing nicely. It should stop you getting the club underground. Secondly, keeping them just on the side of the rib cage is going to reduce how much across the body the elbows can move. Okay, so we've completely re removed a couple of power sources. We've taken away the wrists and the elbows are fixed so you can't get much thrust or drive from the arms. So it's essentially pivot driven. Um, setup wise, ball location center stands nice and narrow. A little bit of lean on the shaft, right? This is low power, so you wouldn't want the shaft to be straight up, straight down. Because in swing, you're going to find it very, very hard to add any kind of lean to it, unless you drift towards target with the head, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but it's about the only way to really get the shaft leaning without putting some wrist into it. Okay, what we're trying to do is keep the arc of the club essentially as constant as possible. There's no big effort to try and get ball then turf or much turf interaction at all. It should feel like a shot that's just clipped off the top. So I'm going to hit a couple to this short flag. It's maybe five steps away from me and just show how low powered it is. So unclocking the wrist, elbows up by the side. There may be a call for a slightly weaker grip right hand for a lot of players and the left hand more underneath and weaker also. Strong group with this and isn't a great combo. So here, just how picky it is off the top. So these are all square face 58. It's a five yard shot. Looking to have my hands and club travel back with my pivot. Okay, my shoulders need to tilt a little bit. I can't stand up away from it because otherwise I'm gonna have to go down again on a downswing. So head stays very, very stable. Hand path club head neutral zero loading, elbows are still on my rib cage. There's a limit to how far back you can take the club doing this. If you start to swing the hands back further, especially than the body, the elbow flexes are going to change, the club's going to get away from you and that gives you some work to do on the way down. It might create power, but it will create problems. Okay, pretty good. This is a 58. If I wanted you to soften the flight a little bit, although I don't know why you'd want anything much softer than that, you could just tweak the face open slightly, keep everything else exactly the same. Just get it popping up a little bit more. So how do we stretch this shot out to longer distances? Well, you've got a couple of options. First one, you could make a ball position adjustment, okay, and have the shaft leaning forwards more. The only thing I'd say against that is once you're in this position, which is more of a, let's say, traditional chip and run position, there's more potential for this club head to travel underground because it gives you something to manage. Now, bear in mind, we've got this lengthened out, shouldn't get longer. We've got these flexed. There's not a lot of shortening that can go on. And by shortening, I mean, how am I going to stop this club going underground and make a nice neutral pivot? The only way I could do it is to make sure I start to stand up as the club comes through. Okay, so it's an option. I'll just hit one to the second flag there to demonstrate. So 
the ball back. I'm going to have to elevate a little bit because I can't shorten it any other way. Okay, not bad. Quite a lot of ground interaction. No, not destructive at all though. Second option is change club, so we'll go to 52. And the key here is to not try and add speed to the shot. Okay, I'm going to use the loft, I'm going to use the length of the club. Make sure I grip right up to the top to give me the forward momentum on the golf ball. So we're going back to normal T-Rex, normal ball position. Tiny bit of lean on the shaft, not much. You can get much more on it quite easily. The, the swing length didn't dramatically alter from the shot that's gone five yards. Okay, pretty good. Stretch out a little bit more, so we'll go to a 9-9. Nine -nine. Let's go back another flag. There's another maybe 10 steps beyond. Same deal. Same wrist, same elbows, same length of swing. It's a little short on the back swing there. One point for consideration is that once you get into your irons that are in your set, chances are the design of the head is quite different to your wedges. Okay, especially if you play with wedges that aren't part of the set you bought. So we've got a cavity, we've got a slightly hotter face. Um, 9 is pretty strong these days, so it will come off a little bit quick. So you will need to practice a little bit. And I said it's low hanging fruit, but maybe a little bit of practice just to get used to the feel of the ball off the face. Let's go again. Didn't really play the break very well either. Okay, not bad. So we're out at about 25 yards with this shot. Interesting, that was a duff. Still made it. Right, stretch it right out. So we're going to go to the flag right at the top. There's a funny little slope in there, which is tricky. And we're out at maybe 35 yards. So we're going to go 7 iron. I'm going to grip down a little bit. I'll keep my wrists, keep my elbows. Same swing. That slope's killed me. Touch wasn't far off. <laughs> okay, it needs a bit more. That's the thing about going with the seven iron. It kind of scares me a little bit, but not bad. Still maybe 12 feet. Okay, we're getting better. Now, there's quite a spread in those golf balls, but there is a shelf that maybe starts 12 feet in from the left edge, and the ball either stays up or it runs down. That's more of a start line issue. What you'll see is all three balls are in line, so my touch uh, was very, very similar. Yeah, but what I want to illustrate from there really is that it's easy to cover the distance without really changing the swing. The length of swing shouldn't have looked dramatically different than the length of swing for this shot that went five yards with a 58. We've just gone up another initial three clubs from that 58 degree to stretch it out from that five yards out to 35, maybe touching 40 yards. All right, so there, there is an option in my mind to use different clubs around the green, use the same technique, but it wouldn't be the traditional ball back and forward technique. Like I explained very briefly earlier, that gives potential in my mind for the club to go underground. Whereas if we go with something that's a little bit more central, just a small amount of shaft lean, putting the wrists in a position where they can't do much, but can do something pinning the elbows to your rib cage, you get something that was going to get the club down to the ground, but then importantly back up from the other side pretty comfortably so you can clip the ball off the top more easily.